Hi everybody, it's Stasia Ray here. I am so excited to be back filming a video. Um, we do have a really special guest star. Hi, Tans. He um, is lonely and he's in my room, which is a last ditch effort because he kind of hates me. But yeah, so today's video, I'm going to talk about eight tips to help you succeed in online college. So if you're a freshman and this is your first time in college, this is probably a little weird. Or if you had to deal with online colleges last semester and this summer because of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the first tip I have for you is a website blocker. So a website blocker is, I'm not, I'm not a tech person. Like I'm really not. So let me describe this in a way. It's this thing that you put on Google Chrome or one of your internet things and it will block your website. So I use one called Freedom. And that one, it works with Google Chrome and basically it you can set whatever time you need something blocked for, eight hours, one hour, 30 minutes, whatever. And you select websites that you wanna block. So things like Twitter, Reddit, Reddit is one I spend a lot of time on. <laughs> Instagram, cause you can also use Freedom on your phone. There's an app on your phone for it. But basically, you know, your emails as well, it can block literally any website. You just have to, you know, put it, put in what website you want it to block. And it does that. And it comes up with this nice little screen saying you're free from distractions, focus on work. And it really helps me, but there's also a free one called stay focused. Cause I know not everybody wants to spend money on a thing because we're already spending money on books. You know, basically does the same exact thing. It blocks a website and I really like stay focused. So, you know, you can use that too. So number two is having a study space. So having a study space is really important and it doesn't have to be a desk. This, I never had a desk until I came back home. Like I usually went to the library, but I know that's not um, a viable option for everyone right now, whether libraries are closed or you don't feel safe going to one. I have a desk here, but you can use a dining table, a coffee, a living room table. You can even use your bed. So the third thing is removing district. Dist the third thing is removing distractions. So. For me, a distraction is going to be my TV, which I'm not gonna take the TV out of my room, I take the remote out, and my phone. Those are my two primary distractions other than the things that are on my laptop. So I basically just put my remote and my phone in another room somewhere else where I don't even think about it, literally out of sight, out of mind. Number four is using a planner. So I usually buy one planner a year, usually during the start of fall, but this one goes until the end of this year. Um, it's, it's a Bandu or Bando. I think it's Bandu, but I don't know. Um, I love this brand. This is the third planner I bought from them because it has really cute, one second. One second, I must show you cute stickers, ah, yeah, I love planners. I did not use a planner in high school, but in college I noticed having a planner was so important because I just started working, which was new. I didn't have a job in high school. And I love these planners just because they're cute, so I want to write in them. So it was easy to create the habit to always be writing down when I had to work, what, when tests were, when homework was due. I think a planner is so useful for starting college. Um, and what I actually do with my planner is I will go through all of my syllabi, I believe, syllabus is syllabi, um, the first week of class or the first day. And I will go through the entire syllabus and write down every single assignment we have. Number five is don't be afraid to email professors or TAs. Um, I know, especially coming in as a freshman, professors seem very scary. But at my school, in my experience, I have never had a bad experience with a professor. Number 
six is having a really good morning routine. What I made the mistake of is thinking, oh, well, if my class is at 10.30, I just need to get up at 10, and then I need like 15 minutes to wake up and I can just roll over and get on my laptop. That could not be a bigger mistake. So you really wanna treat this class as a regular class. Like when I was in face-to-face -face school, you know, back in the olden days, I woke up, it takes me like 15 to 30 minutes to wake up and like really be aware of reality. Um, yeah, it takes a while. Even when I get eight hours of sleep, I just, it's hard for me to wake up because I do not want to. So, you know, I wake up and then usually I will either watch YouTube, which I try not to do, but I'll watch YouTube or read a book. Reading a book is much better. That's what that's what I would recommend to you is read some poetry, read a book, do something like that. Um, and then, so after I'm done reading, I'll get up and I will make breakfast and maybe get, this is what I usually do. I get a big jar of water, like, this is pretty big, I hope you can see that. And I will fill this up and just drink it throughout the day. Sometimes I'll get black tea if I need to get caffeinated, if I'm especially tired that day, which I've been feeling tired every day the past two weeks, I don't know. Um, usually I will eat my breakfast, drink my water, tea, and then meditate. Um, however, I kind of got off the bandwagon with that morning routine, but I'm realizing just now how important it is reincorporating it to get you started in the morning and get focused will really, really help you staying focused in online lectures. That's what I've noticed. So number seven, seven is flow study. So flow study is actually from a YouTuber. I believe her name is Kian MD Vlog and she is a medical school YouTuber and I was studying for the MCAT this summer and I was like, oh my gosh, I can never study for as long as I want to and I just couldn't find a study habit that worked for me and I found this thing that she calls flow basically where you just get into a flow of studying. So let's say you need to study for your biochemistry lecture and you need to study, you said you need to study for two hours. So you get everything you need at your study space. So you get your pen, your notebook, your textbook, your laptop, a snack, water, or some type of drink, and your headphones if you need those. I don't, I have AirPods, but I do not study with them really. Uh, I use my Alexa for music. And I also use study music. I do not put on normal music. And you just get your study space ready and you create smart goals, which I'll put a link of her video in the description and a link about what smart goals are, because I actually think they're super important. But it's basically specific goals that you can achieve in a certain amount of time that are realistic. That's the gist, so. You do it okay, Tad, you're gonna fall off the bed. Yes. Okay. I mean, you're chilling. We're chilling. So that those are specific goals. So they're specific about what you want to do and how much time you're going to give yourself. Um, and you need to make sure they're realistic. So that's how I study. And I just set a timer for two minutes. I make sure I've done what I've said, like create my study space, get rid of distractions, put on my website blocker, have everything I need for this sacred study two hour session. Um, and that's how I've been studying and it works so well. And you can just knock out your studying just like that for the day. And I think it makes me a lot less stressed about studying. The eighth and final tip is going to be reward yourself. Our brain loves dopamine, I think, right? Oh my gosh. If you're a psych major, let me know. Um, but dopamine is like the fun chemical in our brain. Like when we eat chocolate or pizza or like, I think go on a roller coaster, that might be adrenaline. It's really good to reward yourself um, for studying and being focused in class and having productive days. So rewarding yourself can be like, um, set, you know, at the end of the day, like after you've done everything you need to, like lighting candles in your room and like getting a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream and like 
reading a good book or taking a bubble bath or like getting Wendy's spicy chicken nuggets. I don't know, something you like. Going outside is a wonderful one. Like treating yourself to a picnic. Like there's a butterfly garden where I live and there's butterflies flying everywhere. It's beautiful. And the weather is actually really good today. Be easy on yourself. Hopefully you can try some of these tips. I hope they're useful for you. So if you need more help, put a comment down below. I you I always respond to people. So so if you're ha if you need more advice or extra clarification on anything, I will definitely help you with that. Hey guys, so at the end of my videos, I just want to talk about places you can donate to and I'm going to leave a link um, where you can donate to help the Yemen crisis and also some links to learn about like what it is and how it's been made even worse, like the situation is even worse now because of the pandemic. So I'm going to leave some links down there for you so you can donate if you're able to and learn more about what people are calling the worst humanitarian crisis like ever in the history of the world. Thank you for watching. And if you want to see more of my face, uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.